Hi, and welcome to a short introduction of our zebra crossing detection system that we've been developing in the last three months at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. The problem we face is that crossing the street can be very dangerous, especially for visually impaired people. There are aids like zebra crossings that make it much easier to cross the road, but unfortunately these cannot easily be localized by people with a visual impairment. The goal of this project was to provide our users a safe way to cross the road. That is by creating a simple system that allows you to detect and localize zebra crossings from pedestrian view without any human visual sense. To minimize the risks for the user, we set our focus on the reliability of the detection results. We want to assume that the user takes a video with a camera attached to his breast. Of course, a head camera will provide a better perspective, but there is always a high risk to run out of focus caused by unexpected head movements when people spin around their heads to orientate themselves in their environment. Well, let's get started with the architecture. In the first step, the video frames are extracted and scaled down multiple times. A sliding window is then used to extract the respective features out of every single window. In the next step, the feature descriptors are given to a classifier, which decides whether the given sliding window contains a zebra crossing or not. The classified sliding windows are then merged to form the actual detection of our zebra crossing system. Before going into the actual detection step, we first want to give you some detailed information about the feature extraction process. The feature extraction is done by using an extended version of the local binary pattern histogram, the so-called extended RLBPH, which allows you to extract rotation invariant features from a given image. More specifically, we use an LBP configuration with 10 neighbors in a radius of 6 pixels to extract features of our sliding windows. As a quick reminder, you can find a detailed representation of the original LBPH process in the lower picture. After extracting the features of our sliding window, we are now able to train the actual classifier. For the classification itself, we decided to train a linear support vector machine, which determines whether the extended feature belongs to a zebra crossing or not. In order to get the label for the training, we have to calculate the overlap between the sliding window and the pre-labeled polygon of our zebra crossing. The feature descriptor and the respective label is then given to the SVM. To give you a more general idea about how the label is calculated, we will show you a short example on the following slide. If the overlap between the sliding window and the label zebra crossing is large enough, the given feature is trained as a positive training sample. If there is no overlap at all, it is going to be used as a negative sample. Sliding windows with small overlap are not given to the SVM. That is because partial regans may have bad effects on the classification process. So far, we have talked about the feature extraction and the SVM training. Thus, let's get started with the classification and detection process. After training the SVM, we can now use it to classify the sliding windows from our images. What we get as a result is a set of overlapping sliding windows in different sizes. If the SVM prediction is correct, the classified sliding windows should now contain parts of our zebra crossing. Here you can see an example of the predicted sliding windows. It is now up to the detection process to localize the zebra crossing in a picture. The detection part is done in six steps. The following video illustrates the algorithm from classification to detection. In the first step, a heat map is created by merging the sliding windows and summing up the prediction scores of each overlapping sliding window. In order to smooth the detection process, we then apply a Gaussian blur filter on the created heat map. A dynamic threshold that depends on the number of sliding windows is then used to localize the center area of the zebra crossing. Based on this, we are now able to calculate a coarse contour of the zebra crossing. After that, a simple bounding box of the contour is calculated 
with the respect to an average aspect ratio. Finally, the image is divided into three regions to calculate the direction of our detected bounding box. This allows us to generate detailed instructions and navigate the user across the street. Based on the overlap between our detected rectangle and the respective regions, we are able to distinguish between five directions. Left, slightly left, straight ahead, slightly right and right. As you have seen, the detection of the zebra crossing works well for short distances. The reason for that is that we optimized our system for a high precision in order to provide our users reliable navigation and direction results. The detection range is far enough to navigate the user across the road. But to go a step further, we try to increase the detection range by using the same approach to detect the signs of zebra crossings. Therefore, we modified some parameters of our zebra crossing detection approach while using a histogram of oriented gradients in combination with a linear support vector machine. To improve the results, we combined the SVM with a second, color-based classifier. The following video illustrates the final results of our zebra crossing detection project. Zebra sign detected. Maybe there is a zebra crossing ahead. Turn slightly left. Keep straight ahead. Turn slightly right. Keep straight ahead. Zebra sign detected. Maybe there is a zebra crossing ahead. Turn slightly left. Keep straight ahead. Keep straight ahead.